Hi, this is Andy Bartlett from the MathWorks. I'm going to update the envelope detection model that was used in a webinar that Harshita Bharat created back in 2013. And if you go to minute 7 and 11 seconds, you'll see this envelope detection model. So I'm going to update this model to a newer release, and then I'm going to use release 2021A to do the conversion. Here is an updated version of the envelope detector model that Harshida used in her 2013 webinar. This model has been saved with release 2014A, but I'll be doing the conversion using release 2021A. So we'll have all the latest updates to the fixed point conversion tools. One of the best practices when converting from floating point to fixed point is to preserve your original model. So either you can make a copy somewhere else or you can change the name. I'll use the latter approach where I'll change the name to be FXP at the end. Now, one of the things I want you to notice on this model is that there are two inputs that are controlled by this switch. So these are test inputs for the model. One is speech and one is a pulse strain. And we'll use that to test how well the model has been, been converted to fixed point. This also helps us exercise the ranges to know where to place, where to scale the bits for the fixed point design. When we do the conversion, I want to test it with both the speech input and the pulse strain. So to that end, I will be creating what's called a simulation input object, as described here, and I'm creating two of these, two instances. So in one instance, it's configured to set the value parameter of that switch block to zero, and in the other instance, it sets it to one. So that will correspond to two different simulations. And that when those simulations run, they'll automatically change the value of this switch block. Now, the portion of the design we want to convert to fixed point is this portion here. So let's create a subsystem for that. And let's call that embedded code. So that just reminds us of what role this plays in the system. The two yellow blocks are the A to D hardware and the D to, D to A hardware. Everything else is purely for simulation purposes. Okay, now let's go into here. And before we do the oh, launch the fixed point tool, let's save everything as we've got it now. And then either using the apps gallery or the right click context menu, we can open up the fixed point tool and we want to do a new design, and we'll con choose the iterative conversion, which is the same approach that Harshida was using back in 2013. And on the initial setup pane, we need to make sure that the system under design, the one we want to convert to fixed point, is selected, and so that we see the embedded code is selected. We're only going to use simulation ranges to do the conversion, and remember the simulation input object I talked about? We want to test both cases, so we're going to select the object that was created in the base workspace, and that will make sure when we simulate, we'll get both values for that switch toggle. Finally, I want to add some tolerances for the two signals that are logged. So I'm going to add a very small absolute tolerance. And I'm also going to add a 1% relative tolerance. That number got entered correctly. Okay. And these will help us judge whether the conversion from double precision floating point to fixed point is accurate enough. So with those set up, now let's go ahead and prepare our model for conversion. All right. So... We've done various steps here to make sure the model is ready for conversion. And if you wanted to look into these, you could click on a various rows and you could see some details about what it's doing over here. So 
So next we want to collect ranges from the model. Since the model is already in floating point, we can just leave it as use current settings, or we could say double precision override to change types that weren't doubles to doubles, but this case is fine to be current ranges. So let's go ahead and click this, which will run both of the simulations that we set up, the speech input simulation and the pulse simulation. Okay, so we see that the scenario one is collected and scenario two is collected, and we've gotten various ranges, simulation min and max ranges collected, and the aggregation of those two is shown on this view. Okay, now we're ready to go to our settings for conversion. Let's put a 5% safety margin instead of the fault of two, and we'll have a word length of 16 bits. And let's see how well we can do with that. So I've clicked the Propose Data Types button. And now if we look over here, if you look for where the Accept checkboxes are, you can see the data types that were proposed to be changed. So we're setting up five 16-bit fixed point data types. And for example, if we look at this gain, this block here, we're seeing that the blue are the value ranges that we'll keep without overflow. And these yellow ones represent cases where they're very small and we'll just end up quantizing those small values down to zero. If there were red, that would represent overflows either on the positive end or the negative end. But those are avoided. There's no red shown anywhere on this diagram. All right, so now let's go ahead and apply those changes to the model. Okay, we've applied the changes, so those fixed point types are now on the model. And now let's go ahead and run the two simulations using the fixed point types that were specified on the model. Okay. So we had two baseline runs in floating point, and now we have two embedded runs using the fixed point data types. So let's launch the SDI to compare those results. So this is for, as you see up here, this is scenario one baseline versus embedded scenario one. And so this is the output of the D to A converter. So this is what's coming out of our embedded system. And we see this pulse train looks fairly similar. And there's a little bit of noise at the height of that pulse train. But if we look at the green area, which is, this is the OK region, which was created by our abs rel tolerances that we had set on the model. Uh, so we had the 1% rel tolerance and the very small 0 0.0025 absolute tolerance. So that's what this little notch here, that's the absolute tolerance. And then when the signal gets bigger, the relative tolerance will dominate. So the green area gets bigger. And the red curve down here is the difference between the floating point and the fixed point. And that's all within tolerance for that signal. So that's why we have a green checkbox. Now we can also look at scenario two. So we'll do the floating point baseline versus the embedded. And if we say compare, again, we get green checkboxes. At this point, we can just close the fixed point tool. And if we go back and look at our model, we see the signal lines are all using fixed point. So we have successfully converted from double precision floating point to 16-bit fixed point. Okay. Thank you. Bye.